talking about the HPV vaccine today. Dr. Malika Marshall is a pediatrician at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Malika, nice to see you. Good Welcome. See you, so we've heard some really actually tragic and heartbreaking stories today about uh, girls and the HPV vaccine. What's your reaction to those stories, Malika? I think we have to be careful not to jump to the conclusion that just because something happened soon after something else, that one thing actually caused the other. And there have been independent doctors and scientists who have looked at all the data, and there's been a lot of data over the past few years, and they have come to the conclusion that the HPV vaccine doesn't seem to be any riskier than any of the other vaccines that we routinely use. So what is your recommendation for girls and boys? So the, the HPV vaccine has been approved for girls and women ages 9 to 26, but the CDC recommends that girls around the age of 11 or 12 get the series, and that's because we want to get them before they become sexually active. And for boys as well, starting at age 11? We think it's important for boys for two reasons, because it can prevent cancers in men as well, like anal cancer and head and neck cancers, and it can help prevent genital warts, which can be a real nuisance and very difficult to treat. And also by vaccinating boys, you are helping prevent the further spread of HPV. Um, so you're protecting society at large. What are some of the common side effects you're seeing among your patient population? So we haven't really seen, to my knowledge, any significant or serious side effects. I mean, with any injection, you can get redness and pain at the injection site. Um, some girls have developed low-grade fevers. Um, and, you know, there have been reports of fainting. Now, as it turns out, teenagers and tweens often faint with injections, and it doesn't look like they're fainting any more with the HPV vaccine than they do with other shots. Let me ask you about some of the issues that have been raised today. If 95% of all HPV cases naturally clear up on their own, why would you need a vaccine to prevent it? So my understanding is that it can persist in 10 to 20 percent of people who contract it. That yes, most people clear it within a couple of years, but there are people that continue to have it. And we can't identify who's going to hold on to the virus and who's actually going to clear it. So 20 to 30 years down the road, a woman might be faced with cervical cancer. And we know that 12,000 American women deal with cer cervical cancer every year. 4,000 die. We still have women who are dying from cervical cancer in this country, despite the pap smear screening. And we don't have a lot of treatments that can actually prevent cancer. The HPV vaccine is one of those treatments that we have. Well, we have another mother and daughter here with us today. Mira Bogley and Ivani Shaw from Basking Ridge, New Jersey are here. And thank you both. Mira, your daughter's pediatrician. I know recommended that she get the HPV vaccine. Why did you decide that that was the right thing to do? They gave me the information to tell me about the risks and what to expect and uh, the efficacy of the vaccine. So I just wanted to do a little bit of my own research. And after doing that, I actually waited till Ivani was 14 years old to give it to her. And that was also just because I thought, since it was a relatively new vaccine, let me, let me just take my time. And I was confident at that time that there wasn't any sense of urgency. I wanted her to be a little bit older and also for her to feel comfortable with taking a vaccine such as Gardasil. And Ivani, what was it like for you? Did you, um, did you feel comfortable with the whole notion of this? And I felt pretty confident about uh, me being fine afterwards. And after the first round, I didn't display any side effects, so I was confident about the second, same with the second to the third. Mira, af after hearing these stories today, do you have any second thoughts about what you did? I did what I felt was best at the time based on the knowledge that I had, so I, I don't have regrets. So we've obviously heard two different sides about the HPV vaccine, and, and I think for parents watching, it's probably still rather confusing when you hear these heartbreaking stories that these families have endured. So the bottom line, Diane Harper, what would you say to parents listening to this conversation? I have a couple of pieces of advice. One is that remember your pediatricians are experts at giving vaccines. That's what they do. They're trained to give lots of vaccines. The pediatricians do not do pap smears. Um, be your own advocate and be comfortable in saying no if it's not for you and you want to go with the pap smear screening system. The, the next um, piece of advice is to know that the best gift you can give your daughter is when she turns 21, give her a free certificate for a pap smear. And then encourage her to continue in that pap smear screening for the rest of her life. And Malika, what would your advice be to parents who are watching today? 
I would encourage parents to do exactly what this mom did. You know, she did her research. She spoke to her pediatrician. She spoke to friends and family and saw that they had daughters who went through it and didn't have any adverse effects. And I hope that they'll make the decision to actually vaccinate. All right, Dr. Malika Marshall, Dr. Diane Harper, Mira and Ivani, thank you all so much for being here. Really appreciate your insight and experience.